Hi all. Today we're going to have a look at one of Natalia Poganina's games. We've looked at one of her games before and she's a very fine commentator at chessgames.com and becoming a good friend at uh, Twitter and other places and um, I would like to look at 10 of her best games and this is one of the 10 that she had given me to have a look at and this was against the 12th Women's World Cha Champion Anna Antoinette Stefanova who I happened to bump into at the Gibraltar tournament uh, she was playing bit blitz chess with Nakamura. Um, so anyway, she was black in this game against Natalia. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. We have the Roy Lopez, bishop b5. After a6, bishop a4. Um, this is all standard theoretical stuff. And maybe that's what makes the, the coming game so shocking. There's a very you know, powerful psychological shock which white is going to unleash soon on black. So c3, b5, the bishop goes back. Um, so white's slowly building up the center, putting you know, more protection on, on d4, sorry, on e4, and we'll be preparing d4 soon. But first a4, so bishop g4, h3. So black is content to give up the light squared bishop. Uh, but in return, um, you know, this, this does dent white's control of the center a bit more, in particular the d4 square. And also black can now play b4, so black can target strategically these two squares a bit more, more pressure, and has solved the queen's bishop issue. But uh, a5 was played, so that makes sure that um, there's some dislocation of black's pawn structure now, so a5 will not be possible for black. But it's a bit of a commi commitment to keep that pawn there, it can be a vulnerability. Um, so anyway, black castled and now d3. So black played now rook b8. So if we look at this position, I think black's doing okay here. And black is confident enough to try and um, free the position a bit more now with d5. But here is the start of something quite special. Um, and even though it might not be technically you know, the most accurate continuation, from a psychological point of view, this was very powerful at the time of the game. Uh, what happened? So e takes d5. And black played a Zwischenzug move here. Instead of knight, knight takes d5 or queen d5, took on c3. And I think that's, that's a fairly safe um, assumption and that, that, that's possible uh, to do. So white actually just, just took back here on, on c3. And black played knight takes d5. All fine, you would say. There's a slight little finesse about the last move, if we catch up the details of the position here, that the knights just come off h7. And you'll think, oh, this is nothing. And the more important thing here is attack c3, because you know, black's got this blasting rook on the b file, so it makes bishop b2 difficult. So how is white now defending the c3 pawn? Um, if knight e4, the knight's only going to be temporarily there maybe because the bishop could move back and then black later could play f5 and e4 and get maybe a crushing attack going on f2. You know, if you've got this horrible menacing bishop, you know, on, on a7, still eyeing f2 and f5 and e4 is coming with tempo, then white really doesn't want to play a move like knight e4. Uh, so there's still this problem, you know, what to do about c3. A radical solution now is found. Um, which I, I say might, you know, as I say, with computer analysis, of course, it might, be, might not be the most scientific continuation. But from the psychological point of view, this was just brilliant. Uh, what White played here uh, was the move D4. And let's have a, you know, look at this. Immerse ourselves in this position. So White's just giving up the D4 pawn. Why can't Black just take you under? Well, I mentioned H7. And it's being used here to gain an important tempo for exposing another slight tactical vulnerability in Black's position that these two pieces are in pre at the moment. Uh, so we see now this coming to light a bit more. After e takes d4, white plays queen d3, hitting h7. Um, and you'll remember in one of my over the board games, there was this key winning idea with queen d3 hitting h7. It's, so it's, it's often you know a powerful tactic in its own right, even if you know h7 can be defended. You're sometimes gaining a valuable tempo, and here a valuable tempo is gained because, well, say um, knight f6 uh, was played, then there's still the possibility of queen c4 like in the game, and these two these two pieces are slightly exposed. But black actually chose. Um, you know, to leave that knight 
on D D five because you know potentially it is dangerous still with things like knight f four. So Black chose to solve this problem of the h seven pawn by playing g six, and now we see the other tactical vulnerability highlighted now. So Queen c four, and from from the previous shock, I think Black's in shock. Um, th there is you know a, a very uh, you know precise continuation that Black could have played here. Um, and so the computers don't technically like this position, and I dread to turn an engine on. But let's let's, let's just just I'll re review it. Rook b5, knight e4, and the tactical idea Black has is just to sacrifice the rook temporarily with knight takes c3, and so it's not so clear. But I don't really want to go into the maze of variations there. But um, let's just say that the, a better defence was available to Black. But in the game, rook b5 was played, but after knight e4, um, black didn't play knight takes c3. Black instead blundered um, to, a, to a neat, a really kind of neat tactic, actually. So knight e5, I wonder if you could spot it if I give you five seconds starting from now. Okay. The neat tactic is bang, queen takes d5. Because now if queen takes d5, there's knight f6 check. And winning the queen back. So it's a very neat tactic, winning a piece. So it started from that psychological shock of white playing d4. Um, and this is the sort of thing that happens in over the board chess. You know, Otherwise every game would end in the draw if people didn't blunder. But to create blunders, you, you have to use sometimes, you know, put your opponent under psychological pressure for, for people to blunder. It makes it easier. So knight e4... Knight five, so queen takes d5. Now, is it all over? Well, black carries on with d3, and now we see a very nice, precise forcing continuation. Because actually, at the moment, there's a very um, dangerous um, threat which has emerged, which is bishop takes f2 check, and then taking the queen. So white has to be careful. Um, white took the queen off now, so not relying anymore on this because of bishop f2. So rook takes d8. But still, look at this dangerous, seemingly dangerous d-pawn. So white you know, still has to play accurately here. Otherwise there still could be trouble. So bishop a4, gaining another tempo. Nice bishop move. Uh, so d2 is still a major threat. But at the moment, um, it's, it's, it's covered by the knight and bishop at the moment. So that's fine. Rook takes a5, and now we see bishop g5 gaining another useful tempo, hitting that rook on d8. Rook b8, and now another great move, bishop f6, another tempo, third tempo in a row, attacking the knight on e5. So black defends that knight on e5 by playing bishop f8, but now another forced and very clear continuation has emerged with bishop takes e5, because now, well, black resigned here, but there will be rook takes e5, check, king moves somewhere, and now knight d7, forking both rooks. So it was a very concise tactical game from white after that initial, you know, tactical blow was landed. So this, this d4, this idea, see, I think it must have really unsettled um, Antoinette at the time to, to have, um, you know, seemingly, you know, casually playing d5 deliberate you know the pieces in the center and ex try and exploit you know this c3 uh, pawn which is difficult to defend because black has that rook but now this this psychological blow d4 so using h7 to gain a valuable tempo and then for this queen c4 move so here black's calculation started to go downhill after knight e4 by not playing you know, the very cunning knight takes c3, just, just offering um, the bishop temporarily to try and regain it later. So black blundered horrendously now, so with knight e5, due to, you know, the, the pressure just put on the opponent from, from the unexpected, really. Uh, so queen takes d5 with the lovely knight fork possibility. And then we saw a very nice forcing continuation to make sure that white's advantage was you know clinically driven home so this could have been the continuation but um uh so after bishop um f8 bishop takes e5 black had resigned uh please leave any comments or questions on youtube and also if if you if you'd like to follow um natalia 
Poganina. She's actually on Twitter, so you can follow her on Twitter. Uh, Twitter.com slash Poganina. Uh, thanks very much. <laughs>